Hello, brother and sister in Christ. We're in part three. This should be the last part. Okay. Um, make sure you have your Bibles open, King James Bibles open. Uh, let's get back to where we left off, 1 John 4.12. We already talked about this verse because we had to in part one. But here we are getting down to it. 1 John uh, chapter 4, verse 12. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. No man hath seen God at any time. Turn to Colossians 1.10. No man hath seen God at any time. Colossians 1.10. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Okay, why were we created? To please God. For thy pleasure they are and were created. So I want to ask you, what's the purpose of life? It's simple, to please God. To please my Lord and Savior, who is God, fully and completely. Being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. When it says of the Father, it's capital F Father, it's talking about God. 13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. What did we read in part two? We read John 3:16 on down through. What did John 3:19 say? And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. I talked about this. Why didn't I get saved sooner? Because I love the darkness. I love the evilness. Light is come in the world and men love darkness rather than light. I love darkness and my deeds were evil. What did Jesus do? I know it's talking about God the Father in context, but Jesus is God. I believe that. So I can save Jesus. Jesus saved me from the power of darkness. I asked the Lord, I, I talk about, yeah, I asked the Lord why I didn't get saved sooner. That's why. Mm -hmm. We talked about that in part two. I, I was like, Lord, why? I'll go over it again a little bit in this part. Why didn't I get saved sooner? I look back at my lost life. Sometimes uh, my flesh tries to get me down by trying to get me to think of the sins that I committed when I was a professing Christian. I was lost. I was a fake. I was a fraud. And I look back there and I said, Lord, why didn't you show me the truth then? Why didn't you save me back then? Why did it take so long? I didn't get saved till I was 35, 36 years old. That's why. And what did God save me from? From the power of darkness. Let's keep reading. And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, Capital S Son. When you say God the Son, it's no longer capital S Son. You've totally destroyed it. It's the Son of God. Okay, of. Of. There's a connection. Okay. Verse 14. In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. We talked about how Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He's ready to forgive our sins. He paid the price for all the sins of the world, but your sins aren't forgiven. You now owe Jesus Christ, and you have to go through Jesus Christ. You have to go through the cross to have your sins forgiven. The Bible says He is faithful to forgive. If we confess our sins, it's talking about asking for forgiveness, He is faithful to forgive. Even as a Christian, you fail the Lord, you give in to temptation, you choose to sin, you fall on your face, you drop that cross, your walk with the Lord comes to a complete halt. God will shine light on that sin. What's our attitude? We have to deny ourselves, drop our pride, get back to, uh, we have to pick up our cross, get that sin out of our life, and get back to following Jesus Christ, get back to our relationship with Jesus Christ, living for Him. Okay? Even the forgiveness of sin, I don't deny the blood. Okay, you don't plead the blood to be saved. You have to believe that it's God the Father's blood that was shed on the cross. People say, well, I didn't believe it was God the Father's. I said, the Father's. I said, do you believe it was God's 
blood that was uh, shot on the cross, that Jesus is God fully? Well, you know, I believe that, then you believed he was the Father. Because that's the only way you can believe that Jesus is God fully and completely. These people that are adamant that he's not the Father, he's not the Father, they never truly believed in their hearts that Jesus is God fully and completely. They lied with their lips. Okay. Verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God? No man hath seen God at any time. Who is the image of the invisible God? We just read there, the Son. Jesus Christ. He's the body. You can see the body. You can see my body, but you can't see my soul, and you can't see my spirit. But if you're talking to the body, the soul is also talking to you. If my body's talking to you, my soul's talking to you. Okay. He that has seen my body hath seen my soul. They're, they were connected when it comes to sin, but right now my soul's in two places. It's in my body, and now since I'm connected to Jesus Christ instead of this body, I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. How does that work? I don't know. That's where the great, the great is the mystery of godliness. I don't know how it works. How did God give up his incorruptible body in the Old Testament? Jesus was in the Old Testament in an incorruptible body. How did he give up an incorruptible body, come and, get, and be born of a virgin Mary in a body that's likeness of sinful flesh? Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He came in a body of flesh just like you and me. He gave up his incor incorruptible body for a corruptible one. He was never corrupted. He never, saw sin. he never sinned. He was still perfect even though he was in a body capable of sin. He was completely perfect. He was sinless. But how did God do that? I don't know. Great is the mystery of godliness. Okay? Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. He created the body, soul, and spirit of everyone. The spirit and, and body of the animals. Okay? He created the heaven. We can't see heaven. He created anything that's visible or invisible. It was created by Jesus Christ, the person of the Godhead. And I could go through some other scriptures, but there's scriptures in here that talk about how God created everything. Okay? I'm talking, let's talk about the Father. Okay? God the Father created everything through Jesus Christ. They're one and the same. But Jesus is the physical body that you can see. Whether, by, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and, and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. It's just right there, brothers and sisters of Christ. Who is the image of the invisible God? 1 John 4.20 No man hath seen God at any time. So what's that talking about? It's talking about the soul. God the Father. The soul. Who's the image of the invisible God? Who's the body of the Godhead? Jesus Christ. John 1.18 says, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. No man hath seen God at any time, but the only begotten Son. That's important. Once again, you destroy that passage when you say God the Son. You take out the only begotten part. You destroy the Son of God when you say God the Son. He's no longer connected to the Father. Which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. Well, no you haven't, not according to the Trinity. You're not connected to God the Father. Jesus Christ, the Son, is not God the Father. There's no connection. It's not God the Spirit, not, it's not God the Spirit, but the Spirit of God. It's not God the Son, but the Son of God. Okay, it's not God, capital G God, the, uh, lowercase g God the Father, as far as He's separate from the Son and the Holy Spirit. You destroy God, being capital G God the Father, when you try to say God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Capital G God the Father is biblical. But you destroy that. I don't know how many times I've said it. You'll destroy it. You destroy it when you add God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But why? Because you destroyed the Spirit of God when you say God the Spirit. 
It's not the same thing. Spirit of God, which means it's the Holy Spirit of God the Father. It is connected to God the Father. God the Son is not God the Father. God the Holy Spirit is not God the Father. They're not connected. They're preaching a different God that's foreign to Scripture. Actually, not foreign. It talks about the Antichrist. It's teaching Satan, the lowercase g God of this world. Okay? It's teaching Satanism. Jesus is the body. John 1.18 no man has seen God at we are good No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten of the Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, hath declared him. Matthew 12, 8, 28. Matthew 12, 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. Okay? Has come unto you. When you switch it around, you are promoting an antichrist. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. What are they trying to say? He had an antichrist spirit. They had a devil inside of him. That's why he's casting out spirits. He said, but if I have cast out spirits, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, the kingdom of God is coming to you. Jesus had the Spirit of God in him. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, was in Jesus Christ. When you switch it around and you're uh, switch it around to saying God the Spirit, you're promoting an antichrist. You are saying that the Spirit of God is not connected to God the Father. It's not connected to Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is not connected to Jesus Christ. Well, then, how did Jesus Christ cast out devils? By the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that was in him. Not a separate God the Spirit, but the Spirit of God the Father. Galatians 3.28 reads, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Our soul is connected to Jesus Christ. We are all one in Christ Jesus. How are we one in Christ Jesus, brothers and sisters in Christ? Because when you get saved, that spiritual circumcision, body and soul, they snip that connection, so the body sins and it doesn't affect the soul anymore. Now our soul has to be connected to somebody. It has to be connected to a body. Our soul is connected to Jesus Christ. Spiritually. okay. But with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, they are one. They are connected. There's only one person of the Godhead. That's Jesus Christ. He has God the Father in him, the soul. He has the Holy the Spirit, the capital S Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, in him. But they were saying he had a devil in him. They were denying the connection of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ to God the Father and to himself. They were denying his connection to God the Father when he said that God's my Father and I'm the Son of God. They were denying it. What's the Trinity people doing? What's the whole Trinity situation? That uh, pagan belief. You're denying the connection. Well, they're all one. That's the connection. They're just, they're all holding the title of God. They're all one in essence. They're still denying the connection that God the Father has specifically with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has with God the Father specifically. They're denying the connection that the Son of God has with God the Father, specifically. Okay. Colossians 2.10 reads, And ye are complete in Him, which is the head of all principalities and powers, in whom also ye are circumcised with that circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. That's one of those verses that show that God the Father raised him from the dead. But Jesus said, I will raise myself from the dead. Then the Bible says that he was quickened by the Spirit. He was quickened, quickened means made alive. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, raised him from the dead. But look at what we just read there in verse 12. Buried with him in baptism. The old man is dead and buried. Wherein also you are risen with him through faith, the new man, the new creature in Christ Jesus, 
of the operation of God. You deny a changed life, the new creature in Christ Jesus, and the new creature is just not going from unbelief to belief. The new creature is God looks at your life, it's filthy, it's wicked, you're newly saved, and God says, hey, you're a new creature now. I'm going to command, and your heart is going to be, I want to obey. Lord, change this wicked life. Clean up my life, Lord. Please, I want to serve you. Please, I want to please you. Help me, Lord. I can't do it on my own. The operation of God. But as we read there, the spiritual circumcision with hands. Our body sins, it doesn't taint our soul anymore. Okay? When we sin, we're not going to go to hell. We don't lose our salvation. God's salvation is not ours. We don't lose the salvation that God has for us, that He saved us. Okay? The Trinity teaching always tries to destroy the connection that the Father has with the Son and the Holy Spirit. Always try, it's always going to promote three gods. That's their big emphasis. Their emphasis isn't on one God. I mean, think about it and look into it. It's not an emphasis on one God, one God. It's only one God. They put a big emphasis on three separate gods. That's why they be God the Son is not God the Father. God the Father is not the Holy God the, the, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not God the Son. They put a big emphasis on three separate gods. And when you back them in a corner, but they'll say, oh, but it's one God. It's one God. We believe in one God. Oh, it's one God. But they put such a huge emphasis. Why? Because Satan, through the Trinity, is trying to sever the connection that God the Father has to the Spirit of God. Not God the, Son, the Spirit, but the Spirit of God the Father. The connection that they have. Whatever he speaks, God the Father speaks. Whatever the Holy Spirit hears, that will he speak. God the Father speaks through the Holy Spirit to the Christian, the saved brother or sister in Christ. Okay. Opens the scriptures to you. Convicts you of sin. Helps, gives you the strength. I can do all things through Christ with strength of me. Why? Because when you're going through Christ, you're going through, you're going to reach, go through God the Father. No man cometh to the Father but by me. You're trying to come to the Father, but you've got to go through Jesus Christ. If you go through Jesus Christ, you're going through the Father. It's that simple. But that's what the Trinity is all about. Go back to 1 John 4.14. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son, capital S, Son, to be the Savior of the world. God manifest in the flesh. Acts 20:28. 20, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. What are you saying? 1 John 4:14 says the Father sent his son to be the savior of the world, but then it says here to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. It doesn't say God the Son here. Capital G God is a reference to the Father. I'll keep quoting this. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. There's what one capital G God, the Father. And one capital L, Lord, Jesus Christ. Okay? They're one and the same. But there's only one capital G God, the Father. Feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. You see, this whole chapter is talking about the test of the Antichrist spirit is, is, do they believe in Jesus Christ, who is God fully and completely? He's not a third of God. He's not the second member of God. He's not God the Son tearing away his connection to God the Father. Who is, that is scriptural, God the Father. He is the Son of God. God manifests in the flesh. Do you believe that? Is that the Jesus Christ you serve? Is that the Jesus Christ you live for? No? Then it's an antichrist spirit that you're living for. Paul preached this. If anybody preach another Jesus which we have not preached, or get you to receive a spirit, another spirit which we have not received, or another gospel which we have not preached. People coming in and preaching a no-change life gospel. Jesus is not, is not Lord of your life because technically he's not God the Father, so he's He's a lesser God. We're not going to use the word lesser. We're just going to say He's God the Son. But that's saying He's a lesser God. No. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, who is the capital S Son of God, who is God, the Father, the soul, manifest in the flesh. First John, First John 4.15 Whosoever shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. See, this big thing right now is they're trying to say that we don't believe, we who believe in the Godhead of the King James Bible, they're getting so desperate, they're claiming we don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And my thing to them is if you truly believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then why do you keep screwing it up and saying God the Son? Why do you have to replace that with God the Son? We believe in the Son of God. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He's the body of the, of the Godhead. Body, soul, and spirit. We don't deny that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But when you say God the Son, you're denying it. Clear as day. Okay, whosoever shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Let that sink in, brothers and sisters in Christ. God dwelleth in him. How does God dwell in you? Through the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit's in you. And that connection that the Spirit of God, I always kind of emphasize of, because that shows connection of God, because of that connection, God is in us. God the Father dwells in us. It also says, and he in God. Uh, wait a minute, I, I'm in Christ Jesus. That's why we're called the body of Christ. My soul is connected to Jesus Christ now. He's my body. His righteousness is imputed to me. Absolutely. But because Jesus Christ has a connection to God the Father, the soul is connected to the body, God the Father is in us. And we in him. It says, he in God. See, we're not only in the Holy Spirit, but we're also in God the Father. The Holy Spirit's not, I'm sorry, the Holy Spirit's not also in us. God the Father's in us. And we're not also in Jesus, just in Jesus Christ. We're in God the Father because we're in Jesus Christ. I just wanted to iterate again. Why? Because they're one. They're one and the same. That's the only way it can be possible. If they're separate persons, it's not possible. Now, we've already talked about person, body, soul, and spirit. You have to have the body, and soul, and always refer to someone who's living to be a person. That in itself shows that the Trinity is pagan beyond belief. But what they like to do is they like to change definitions. Well, a person doesn't always have to have a body, soul, and spirit. They're lying to you. Show me in Scripture where someone is referred to as a person that doesn't have a body, soul, and spirit. The only person in the... Uh, uh, only. The only part of the Godhead that's referred to as a person is Jesus Christ, and he's referred to it four times. Why? Because he keeps saying, I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me. The soul is in Jesus Christ, is God the Father. The spirit that's in Jesus Christ is the spirit of God. Okay? He has a body, soul, and spirit. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. 16. And we have known and believe that and we have known and believe the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Okay, the Antichrist spirit filled people will accuse us of denying the Son of God, which you talk about, when in fact they are hiding the truth that they do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God, capital S Son, because I always hit them up with that. If you believe Jesus is the Son of God, why do you got to switch that around and replace that with God the Son? Ask him. Why do you replace it with God the Son then? If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and there's nothing wrong with that, why do you replace it with God the Son? Why do you destroy the connection the Son of God has with the Father by saying God the Son? And this is the one thing that God brought to me. I'm sorry. I mean, some of you might get it. I hope you do. But, brother, says Christ, I'm not mocking God. But listen, it just read there that, and we know, at verse 16, and we have known and believed the love that God hath towards us. Okay? God is love. Now remember, there's no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. 
And then goes, Jesus goes on to say, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. But the Bible says, this is Jesus speaking, there's no greater love than this that a man lay down his life for his friend. So the thing that I'd have to ask you, brothers and sisters in Christ, if I looked at your life was in danger, and I'm like, okay, I love you so much, brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm going to give Brother Brian's life for you. It's a separate person. There's three persons in the Godhead. I'm going to give somebody else's life in place of my own to save you. That's how much I love you. Well, you say, well, not, well, you say that's not love, true love. The Bible says that a man, that specific man, give up his life for his friend. There's no greater love than this. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Well, I'll give up Brother JT's life to save yours. Is that true love? Do I have true love for you if I'm willing to give up anybody else's life but my own? That's not true love. If it's God in three persons, how did God the Father show such great love for us if he sacrificed a separate person on the cross? Stop and let that sink in, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let that sink in. Okay? No, it was God the Father. It was his body, Jesus Christ, that died on the cross. He sacrificed his life, Jesus Christ, God the Father sacrificed His life through Jesus Christ on the cross. That's why it's God, God the Father's, capital G, God's blood that was shed on the cross. That's why it's great love. There's no greater love than this. That's why it says, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in Him. If God's a separate person, He can't be in you. Okay? That's why I keep saying it's so important to get that out of your vocabulary. There's no such thing as God, the Son, in Scripture. It's the capital S, Son of God. He's the body of the Godhead. He's the person, because He has a soul, and He has a spirit. In Him dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He's got God the Father in Him. He's got the Spirit of God the Father in Him. But it just, it hits me up and I'm like, really? How could God the Father truly love us if he gave up a separate person to die for us? I'm not willing to die for you, but I'll give up this separate person to die for you. That goes against scripture. There's no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. His life. It's not great love if I'm giving, down, giving up someone else's life and I'm not willing to give up my own life. That's not true love. That goes back to us too, brothers and sisters of Christ, as far as serving Jesus Christ. I gave my life to Jesus Christ, the old man, dead and buried. The new man comes up. I have followed Jesus Christ. I obey his commands. Okay. It's your true love for Jesus Christ. So you love Jesus Christ? then you keep his word. True love for Jesus Christ? The old man is dead and buried. You gave that life to Jesus Christ. It was crucified with Christ. You're a new creature. Oh no, that doesn't have to happen. You're not saved. Colossians 1.10 That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to His glorious power unto all patience and long-suffering and joy. I'm sorry, guys. I just was putting this to the side and I was trying to read where I left off. Okay, I'm sorry. I was... Please forgive me. It's been a long study doing these out three part studies. Please, please forgive me. I accidentally went back to the top of this page, and this page is where we're done. We're finished with this page. Okay, there's no greater love than this. The man laid down his life for his friend. Okay. I just I'll keep iterating. Brother and sister in Christ, that might be a key way to help us show that this God three person thing is just garbage. It's just utter garbage. It's Satanism. It's Antichrist, Antichrist spirit. It's all of Satan. It's not of God. How did God the Father show us such great love if it's three separate persons and he decided to give up someone else's life in his place? 
How is that great love? It's not. Uh, turn to Turn to John 10:27. says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. The soul is greater than the, the, the body. That is truth. And, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Stop. The reason he says it's greater, why do you think Jesus said, No man knoweth the day or the hour except my Father which is in heaven? God the Father, the soul, I don't know how it works, whether it says Christ, I can only say what the Bible says. God the Father, the soul, is in heaven, on the throne, running things all the time. But God the Father, the soul, is also in Jesus Christ. Okay? God the Father, the soul, is outside of time. He knows past, present, future. He knows everything. God comes down, Jesus comes down in the likeness of sinful flesh. He, comes, he goes into time. He's no longer in eternity. He comes into time. He doesn't know the day or the hour at that point in time. When he ascends up to heaven, now he knows. But at that time, he was telling them, No man knoweth the day or the hour except my Father which is in heaven. The soul is greater than the body. That's all he's saying there. Okay, verse 13, then he says, I and my Father are one. 31, then the Jews took up stones to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. When he says, I and my Father are one, God is my Father, you're making yourself equal to God. Then he says, I and my Father are one. They said, thou makest thyself God. Yes, he is. God the Father and Jesus the body, the Son of God the Father, they're one and the same. If they weren't, what kind of great love would that have been for God the Father to sacrifice a separate person, a separate lowercase g God, God the Son, on the cross? Where's the great love in that? There isn't. There's some love. I mean, I understand how some parents have, have sent their children off to war and they die in the war and they sacrifice their children to serve this country. I understand a little bit of love, but the Bible says that there's no greater love than this that a man lay down his own life. How can God be love if he didn't sacrifice his own life at the cross? It's not possible according to the Trinity. But if you believe in the Godhead of the King James Bible, you say the soul and the body were both on the cross when it died, when Jesus died. So was the Holy Spirit. Go back to 1 John 4, 17. That's the only way God is love. He sets the example for us to love one another, brothers and sisters in Christ. 1 John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as He is, so are we in the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus gave His life. God the Father gave His life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, so that we don't have to go to hell. Are you willing to give your life for Jesus Christ? Are you willing to give your life to save a brother in Christ? You say, well, what's that have to do with me? What if you had brothers in Christ hiding underneath the floorboards of your home and they were coming to hunt down Christians and they grabbed you and realized, hey, he's one of those Christians. I know he is. And they grabbed you. Are you going to keep your mouth shut and die, really to die for them? And they, okay, if you tell us and turn in at least three more Christians, we'll let you go. Because three question, Christians are better than one. Are you willing to give your life for the brethren? 
Are you willing to give your life in a lifelong, not just in death, but in lifelong servitude, serving the brethren, like I'm trying to do here with this, these Bible studies? Preaching the Word of God, being there to pray with the brethren, being there to talk to some of the brethren that are struggling, to encourage one another, be self-sacrificing. Brother need help financially or physically? We're so spread out, the physical part's hard. Because I just wish sometimes there was a brother here that could come over and help me physically. And there's times I'm willing to help other brothers out physically. But we're so spread thin. I, I, like I said, I feel like I'm the only saved sinner for 100 to 200 miles. Right? And there's a brother in Christ. He's my uncle. But he loves the Word of God. He pointed me to the Bible version issue through King James Video Ministries. And there's times where he's called me up and needed physical help. And I'm like, absolutely, brother. Will you say, well, he's my uncle? I won't do that for all my family members, okay? I'm getting to the point where I can't hardly drive. I had to drive, I think, 180 miles. Um, I'm forgetting how far it is from uh, Brookings to Medford, uh, Oregon. But I have to drive a long ways to help him out. I won't do that for just anybody, all, anybody in my family. It's a brother in Christ that he was desperately in need, and I was there to help him. I'm not trying to get a pat on the back. I'm using it as an example to the body of Christ. Remember, we're supposed to be an example to the body of Christ. We're supposed to be there to help one another. Okay? Whereas, you want to have boldness in the day of judgment? You want to truly have boldness? We're always worried about, you know, we can stand up there. We're going to lose a lot of works. It's our sins as a Christian. The sins that we commit as a Christian, are they going to be there? For everybody to see when we go to the judgment seat of Christ. But it says right here from this study, it says, Here is love, God, our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of, of judgment. Because as He is, so are we in the world. Do you love the real Jesus Christ of Scripture with your actions? Remember, love is an act of your will. By following His word. Are you loving the brethren the way the Bible says we're to love the brethren? then you can have boldness on the day of judgment. You're going to fail the Lord. You're going to mess out on some rewards. But you can have boldness in the day of judgment. That's the Lord my God. That's the Lord Jesus Christ that I love. The Jesus of Scripture who is the capital S Son of God, who is God the Father manifest in the flesh. That is God fully and completely. That's the God I love. These are the brethren that I love. Look at all these brethren here the judgment seat of Christ. You can have boldness in the day of judgment. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Okay. How we treat our brothers and sisters in Christ, and how we keep our eyes on and stand for Jesus Christ, the love for Jesus Christ, keeping his word. The Jesus Christ who is come, the Jesus Christ who I am. The Jesus Christ who is Alpha and Omega. The Jesus Christ is the Holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We will have to answer for our life as a Christian someday, but do you want to have boldness at that judgment seat of Christ? What Jesus are you serving? Well, I mean, if you're serving the wrong Jesus Christ, then you didn't get saved. But this warning is to the brethren who have, are serving the real Jesus Christ, but they're starting to get pulled away to this antichrist spirit of the world. They're starting to get pulled away into the world. You want to have boldness when you stand there, or you have to stand there and look and go, wait a minute, I kind of fell away from loving that Jesus. I fell away from loving the brethren. And I'm just, you're just sitting there just ashamed of yourself, and you don't have boldness. That's something to think about, brothers and sisters of Christ. This whole chapter is talking about believing that Jesus Christ is God fully and completely. And loving the brethren. True love for Jesus Christ and loving the brethren. 1 John 4.18 There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. One thing I've noticed about a lot of these Trinitarians, they don't have, they have fear. 
Well, how do you know that? 2 Timothy 1.7 For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Anybody that believes in the pagan trinity and says that's what the King James Bible teaches does not have a sound mind. They also, we talked about this earlier, they do not have true love for the brethren. They have hate and disdain and bitterness and anger towards the brethren. They don't have true love for the brethren. And they have no power whatsoever. Their power is an illusion. Why? Because they, are, they have a spirit of fear. They have that antichrist spirit that keeps them fearful. If they can keep them fearful, that antichrist spirit can keep them under control. Just look at what's going on in the world, all the fear-mongering that's going on in the world to get people to follow things that are so stupid. Not just because I believe they're stupid, it's just the truth, the absolute truth, the true science, everything. They're lying. It's all false. But they use fear to get them to obey. Same thing goes with the Trinity. They use fear to get the tr people to believe in the Trinity. There's no fear in love. Right? But perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath because fear hath torment. You're tormented when you're fearful. I've been afraid. I've had panic attacks because of fear. It's torment. Right? He that feareth is not made perfect in love. First John 4:19. We love him because he first loved us. If a, if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. He's a liar. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I am a brother in Christ. If you disagree with me about something, show it to me through the scriptures. Comparing scripture with scripture with scripture. If you keep, what I, the thing here is talking about, uh, if a man... If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he's a liar. I get a lot of hate from these people that come in professing to be saved. They bring their feelings and opinions to me. They bring worldliness to me. Them as the final authority to me. They don't use scripture. What's going on? And they show hate for, for me. I'm supposed to be a brother in Christ, but they have nothing but hate for me. For he that loved not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Talk about the soul. We haven't seen the body either, but someday we will see Jesus face, face to face. Verse 21. And this commandment, because I always say it like that, because remember, this is John. John saw Jesus. No man had seen God at any time. The Son of God, the uh, 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 has revealed him. I, my, my brain's not. I'm getting kind of tired from this long study. Um, but G, G, uh, the God the Father is revealed through Jesus Christ, the body. But he's saying right here, How can you love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. Turn to Matthew 22, 37. This is our last scripture, okay? True love for the real Jesus Christ is going to lead to true love for the brethren. True love for the brethren. Okay, I disagree with some of the brethren in ministry. I've, I've even believed that some of the men, uh, men in ministry are starting to lose their focus. Their focus isn't on this. Their focus is on what's going on in the world. And they're getting too distracted by what's going on in the world. And their ministry has come to a complete halt because they're not preaching the word of God. But I, have, I don't hate them. I pray for him. And that's what you got to do, brothers and sisters Christ. Pray for me. Pray for Brad, I hope I pronounce his last name, Avenshine at Cannibal KJV. Brother JT at the Wine Press. Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries. Pray for all the men that are in ministry that they stay focused, especially in these last days. That we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ and help keep promoting people, you brothers and sisters of Christ, in our ministry to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. To love one another. Matthew 22, 37. We're going to read this one all over again. Jesus saith unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The Lord thy God. Jesus who is God fully and completely. 
He's connected to the Father because He's the soul. Jesus is the body. They are one. In Him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay, it says, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Singular. One capital G God. If it's three persons, it's not possible to obey this. Well, which God do we, do we love with all our heart? Is it God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, or God the Father? There's only one God here that we're supposed to love with all our heart. It goes back to we get to choose, right? He can be as God's. You're the Lord of your own life. You get to be your own final authority. No, it says, love the Lord thy God singular with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. Verse 38, this is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Did the people love Jesus, who is the Lord thy God, when he first came? No. They didn't love him as the Lord thy God. The Jewish people were hitting him hardcore saying, you are not God the Father. You are not God the Father. You're not equal to God the Father. You make us yourself God, capital G God. You try to say that you are God the Father. You are wrong. They didn't believe he was God the Father. They rejected him. If you're lost and you come across this, are you going to reject like a false convert? You realize, hey, something's not right. I'm not what I didn't believe in the real Jesus Christ. Are you rejecting the Jesus Christ of Scripture who is God the Father? You need to go back to the salvation message that we have on this channel. And you need to think hard. I need to come broken. They told me I didn't have to repent. They lied to you. They told me I didn't have to pray. I didn't have to confess both my repentance and my belief in prayer. I didn't have to even ask God to save me. They lied to you. They told me that there was no changed life. I didn't have to have a changed life. I could just call myself a Christian and continue in this world the way I was before. They lied to you. It's the Antichrist spirit lying to you. You need to get saved today. Time is running out. I've always said that for years. Time is running out. I see what's going on in the world. We can be caught up any day now. All right. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the whole point of this is the true Antichrist test is simple. What Jesus do they profess? Is it the Jesus of the Godhead? Is it the Jesus of Scripture? The Jesus Christ who is the capital S Son of God? The Jesus Christ who is God? There's only one capital G, God, the Father. So when you say Jesus is God, you're saying He's the Father. And that's truth. That's the right thing to do. Jesus is God. Fully and completely. That's the true Antichrist challenge. That's the true test of someone who has the Spirit of God inside of them or an Antichrist spirit. And like I said, this whole thing about the Trinity and this Antichrist spirit, it's connected with worldliness. It's connected with easy believism, false gospels. It's connected to trying to get people away from the Word of God and into these Bible perversions. Okay? It's connected to correction of God's Word, subtracting and adding to God's Word. It's connected to so much stuff that's contrary to Scripture and the Jesus Christ of the Bible. That's the true test. Are you living, brother, sister, Christ? Going back to you guys, not the lost world, you. Are you living as if Jesus Christ, not as if, that He is, capital L, Lord of your life. He commands, you obey. Are you truly loving Jesus Christ by keeping His commandments? By keeping His Word? Is He Lord of your life or are you your own Lord? Is Jesus capital G God, the Father in your life, or are you your own God? You can be as God's knowing good and evil. And what we've seen in this whole study that we've done, brothers and sisters Christ, this expository study, is that Bottom line, this whole Trinity thing, if you believe in the true Godhead of the King James Bible, you're going to have real love for the brethren. Because you're going to be loving the real Jesus Christ. You're going to be living a life of Christ, and you want to be there for your brethren. There's going to be true love there. You're going to notice with this Trinity, the Catholic Church believes in the Trinity, all these false religions believe in Trinity, and they have no love for truly saved, Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women. They hate us. They want to see us burn. 
and I get the same feeling from all these people that try to smile and be nice, like Robert Breaker and Edward P.F. and King's Table and uh, Steve Anderson and sometimes even ex-Catholics for Christ, I could go on and on. They like to see us burn. They say that we're lost and we need to get saved. We're saved. We're not lost. We believe in the King James Bible. We believe in the Godhead of the King James. We believe in the Jesus of the King James Bible. They like to see us go away. They like to. They don't want us around. They like to see us burn. A lot of them. They don't have love for the brethren. They hate the brethren. They're wolves in sheep's clothing, as the Bible calls them. False brethren. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, I pray that this has helped you, so you can mark them. And avoid them. Okay, there's a verse that says, "Mark them which cause division and avoid them." I'm not causing division. Show me in the scriptures. That's what we've always been about, brothers and sisters in Christ. Show us in the Bible. This is our final authority. The Jesus Christ of the King James Bible is our final authority. I've never been against that. But these people out there, they're their, their own authority. So, pray, uh, grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please, grace and peace, especially in this world today. Stay focused on your walk with the Lord and obeying His commands. Okay, get, get it in your head, okay? I'm, I'm eternally secure. You need to have a security of your salvation. Stop doubting your Get to a point where you don't doubt your salvation anymore. You're eternally secure, and you can focus on 100% serving the Lord. With the life that you live, if you get called into ministry with preaching... With uh, the Ministry of Reconciliation, handing out gospel tracts. I, I keep trying to do that around here. Um, okay, Living for Jesus Christ, loving the brethren one another, and taking care of one another. Okay, Don't, don't fall into this, be part of the falling away. The Bible keeps saying, stand, stand, stand. Don't faint, don't falter. Stand. Don't be one of the people that are falling away. I see it happening to some people, some of the brethren. It's like they're slowly falling away. They're not standing. They're losing their focus. They're not focused on Jesus Christ. They're getting distracted by the world, cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and lust of other things are coming in. And one of the big things that are pushing us is this antichrist spirit is behind the whole thing. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things. The antichrist spirit is behind it. It's doing everything it can to prevent people from getting saved and to prevent you from being fruitful. This word, this book, the Word of God, from being fruitful in your life. From loving Jesus Christ and loving the brethren. Grace and peace is what I pray for you guys. Get your eyes off this world and back on the Word of God. I warn people about things. There's nothing wrong with warning about people about things. But you cannot force the lost world to go the direction you want it to. Remember, we're not physically fighting. We battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It's a spiritual battle. We are fighting this antichrist spirit for as long as we can until we get caught up. When we get caught up and there's no one left to fight the Antichrist spirit, guess what happens? The Antichrist himself shows up. He can't show up while the body of Christ is here. Why? Because we are fighting that Antichrist spirit. That's not Jesus Christ. That's an Antichrist spirit. The Jesus of the Trinity, that's not the Jesus of the King James Bible. That's an Antichrist. That's Satan. All those false religions out there, that's a false religion. Those Bible perversions, they're Catholic Bibles. They promote the Antichrist. They're satanic. We're here to point that out to get people saved. To point people to the real Jesus Christ. When we leave, catching away the body of Christ, the Antichrist is going to come. So grace it. Please, I hope this study's helped you. That's the true test. Do you believe Jesus Christ is come? You confess it. Remember, confession comes from the heart, but it also means belief. Is come is only something you can say about God the Father. I am is only something you can say about God the Father. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. It's the only thing you can say about God the Father. Alpha and Omega. It's only something you can say about God the Father. Do you believe Jesus is God? 
Capital G God, I pray you do. I do. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus, our capital L Lord. Thank you for watching.